of the more than 130 monuments and statues and memorials here in Washington, D.C., 18 of them specifically are dedications to Civil War heroes from the American Civil War in the mid-19th century. Perhaps one of the more significant ones, if not the most significant one, is behind me here at Scott Circle, which is a traffic circle here in Washington, D.C., named aptly for Lieutenant General Winfield Scott. Now, the reason that he is so incredibly significant is that at 20 years of service as the commanding general of the United States, he is the person who held that position longest in our entire history. And he served with distinction in five major campaigns stretching from the War of 1812 all the way through the American Civil War and served under every president from Jefferson through Lincoln. Now, this circle that's named in his honor is the southeastern terminus of what is considered Embassy Row because at this circle we have Rhode Island Avenue and Massachusetts Avenue and I think this is 16th Street, yes, it's just north of the White House, that all come together at this circle. Well, obviously, up Massachusetts Avenue northwest from here is Embassy Row. And if you can see in the very far background, on the far side of the circle, this building that has this big wrap around it with all these, I don't know, ads, I guess you'd say, that is in fact the Embassy of Australia. So this is where Embassy Row starts and it heads northwest from here. Now, this statue of Scott, I had mentioned in previous episodes that a lot of these are made, you know, like one and a half times life size. So as you drive by them, you get that perspective that they're about life size from the distance you're standing. This statue's 15 foot tall and like 10 foot long. So you'd say, yeah, that's probably a lot taller than a man sitting on a horse. Fact of the matter is though, is that uh, General Scott was in fact six foot five. And uh, he, uh, after the Civil War, he uh, was nominated to run for the presidency and at 6'5", he has the distinction of being the tallest person ever to run for the office of the presidency, which he didn't win, of course, but one of those little esoteric pieces of history I thought you might enjoy. Another significant thing about this particular monument is that the base you see it's sitting on, like so many of these, is this giant piece of granite. This one is, has another little special thing about it, okay? When it was quarried in, I think, 1874, at 150 tons, it was the largest single piece of granite ever quarried in the United States. So at that time, you can imagine with the technology available, what an incredible feat it was to get it out of the quarry, to shape it into its correct shape, and to bring it here and set it so it wouldn't sink into the earth, so we could put this massive statue of bronze on top of it. Anyway, I'm not going to go into a, a lot more about General Scott. I, I think those are the salient points. Um, I think that, you know, the fact that he served under so many presidents was a testament to how well respected he was. Regardless of the change of the administrations, that his service was considered vital to the nation. Uh, he was um, <laughs> known as Old Fuss and Feathers. And, um, this is because he was very stringent about uh, military discipline, military training, and it was during the War of 1812 where uh, the process of training soldiers really brought our army from sort of a militia to what is now considered a professional soldier. So if, for those of you who served in the U.S. military, and I thank you very much, and our professional soldiers, sailors, airmen, whatever, that started an idea of professionalism and training started with General Scott in the early part of the 19th century. So a lot of interesting little things about him, although he's largely overlooked in history now, 
he had a significant role in the development of our nation, of our military, and all these things. So I hope you've enjoyed that short visit here to Scott Circle and to General Winfield Scott. Now, by the way, don't confuse him with Winfield Scott Hancock, who we did an episode on earlier, also a Civil War hero, down and near the center of town, near the Navy Memorial. Different fellow. Although, they, and I don't think that one was named after the other any relation. It's just a, a coincidence, as far as I know. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this visit to Scott Circle and General Winfield Scott. If you've got questions or comments, hey, leave them in the comments section below. I love hearing from all of you. I try to get back to everybody I can. If you're new here, hey, big subscribe. Come along for the adventure. we got lots more to show you. And as always, thank you for watching.